Hi friends, and welcome to the Shits and Gigs podcast, where we keep the vibe high, the humor gets raunchy, and things get spicy when we talk about food. Tonight I have my friend Joanna, who I met at Elevated Nutrition, shout out to Elevated in West Greenwich, Rhode Island, um, our nutrition club that we hang out at and chat with. We got our tall glass of aloe water, nice and cloudy, how we like it, room temp, no ice. <laughs> Um, but Joanna has become such a fond friend of mine through the club. It was like an instant connection the day you walked in. You're just one of those people that is so transparent and open and you're so easy to connect with because of that. And through many random conversations, I feel like the topics of conversation are so broad when it comes to (laughs) us and like the group of the club. Um, but Joanna is a people and culture professional by trade and then she is a personal development expert by choice and she's also a theater connoisseur she really does it all honestly and um i think all those special things are just uh, like a nice little package of who you are (laughs) (laughs) well i am so happy to be here hi everyone and thank you for that introduction i love that (laughs) i love going to elevated nutrition I love spending time with you. I I love that Meg has an energy of wanting to push me to like maybe have a different shake than the same one I've had for the past <laughs> six months. And I might not say yes it. right away, but she does. That's actually what pushed her to decide to do this podcast yeah. today. To um, push me to step outside of my comfort zone. So yeah, get uncomfortable. I love our connection and I love the fact that we're here to yeah. talk about some cool things. Well, thanks for putting yourself out there and coming and doing this with me. And because of Joanna's background, and she's, I mean, she's, you deep dived into like many different topics when it comes to personal development, but with it being the beginning of the year, we figured we would tiptoe into goal setting, how to set realistic goals, and then also manifestation, because that's really fun, and it's something that people are either unaware of, that it's a thing, or maybe they're kind of just skeptical of it, so maybe we can just kind of, I don't know, cast some light into that direction, and inspire people to dream bigger, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. (laughs) And Joanna did um, preface. She has been involved with something called a Year of Miracles Mm -hmm. uh, for eight years now, you said? This is starting year eight. Okay. Do you want to give like a little insight on what that is? Yeah, sure. So in 2017, I think there's like an email affiliate marketing program with some of the personal development experts that are out there. And Mm -hmm. somehow I believe it was this woman, Ariel Ford, who I had been studying, who's an expert on like soulmates and love was promoting this program. And I'm like, that word miracle sounds good. (laughs) I'm going to, so they had a webinar about like the three keys to building a miraculous life. And so I listened to the webinar and I was Mm -hmm. completely hooked. Yeah. And so I signed up. Yeah. So I signed up for the basic program and, and basically what the program is, is um, it's a year-long course, and mm-hmm. they have a different theme for every month. They talk about three keys to the theme each month, and then they bring in an expert. So then it expanded my whole world, because each yeah. year that I did it, you're exposed to 12 new experts that then give you sales on their program. That's So cool. it really like broadened my horizon about all the topics and right. experts and tools that you can study to help live your best life. That's awesome. And... January, their theme is always dreaming your miraculous dreams. Mm-hmm. And so the whole month is focused on setting a theme for the year, thinking about having some intentions for the year. They teach you how to set the intentions. And so I didn't ever used to plan. Yeah. You know, I used to use the Franklin <laughs> Covey, which I'm not knocking Franklin Covey, but that's kind of a very masculine way to just be like, what are my A, B, C items gotcha. as opposed to like not including the spiritual component and yeah. so I feel like your year of miracles and some of those other things I've come across marry like the masculine logical side with the feminine more spiritual side and mm. science yeah. comes into it as well so I kind of like to look at the planning kind of combining all the all those pieces of yeah I love that and you've obviously you mentioned you've been committed to that for eight years what do you mm-hmm. think it is about this specific program that has kept you involved with it for so long Gosh, that's such a good question. (laughs) Well, the very first year that I started to do it, something very odd happened, which is I started having (laughs) all these, like, synchronistic run-ins with people. I was running into ex-boyfriends, into ex-friends. I maybe had, like, 30 run-ins within, like, three months of, like, starting this program. Yeah. Number one, I was like, okay, something has happened with me being connected to this program, number one. And then number two, anytime I was doing the work I was supposed to be Mm -hmm. doing, 
better things were happening yes, to me. I so totally I noticed to that. Yeah. What what would I now call an inspired action or mm-hmm. like doing you know taking my spiritual path when I did the work? Yeah. Better things happened. It just was right. a simple thing that I noticed that I didn't feel as good when I was binge watching too much TV, yep. and so it's a <laughs> a better life if I can sneak couple hours a day of yeah. you know, paying attention to trying to learn some of these topics. Right, absolutely. I've done a handful of different personal development um, programs in the past. But like I, Gem. Like Gems <laughs> with Danny Johnson, yes. um, Tony Robin, Robbins, mm-hmm. we've gone to a seminar. Uh, what else have I done? Gabby Bernstein. Love I've her. done a couple of her like mm-hmm. online courses and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that I had really dove into for myself I think at the start of when I was an entrepreneur, which was back in 2016, is when I officially started well, that That's path. almost the same time frame. Yeah, right. Okay. I was kind of amateur at that point. It was like I just started entrepreneurism, and within that, the trainings would go into personal development, which is nothing something I'd never even heard of before, um, before being plugged into that unit. Um, but journaling was the one that really stuck with me. At first, it was like very basic gratitude journaling, and then it was affirmations, and then through listening to different podcasts and through different courses, it was more so like intuitive journaling. And then, um, I don't know, it just kind of transformed year to year depending mm-hmm. on my mindset and what I was trying to accomplish. And I would say I had a pretty solid daily journaling habit of six plus years. And Wow, yeah. that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely, like you mentioned, when you're putting in that work for yourself, I would see a direct correlation of like when I was in that habit and when it wasn't and uh that is something that I kind of lost sight with the transformation to motherhood and I've just started to gift myself or not necessarily give myself I attempted to give myself that time (laughs) earlier uh like a couple months ago and it just wasn't panning out because I'm just like a big morning mindset person Mm -hmm. so to do it at the end of the day just wasn't the same for me but luckily, the baby started sleeping a little more consistently in the morning. So now I just make it a point to get up a little earlier mm-hmm. so I can get back into that. And already, like, I actually received the most beautiful compliment from you the other day. Oh, really? What did yeah, I say? Yeah, you said, have you done something different? Your, like, energy is, like, glowing different today. Yes. Yeah. I actually remember. <laughs> it was the day you're like, Joanna, try a different shake. And I was yeah. like, no. <laughs> but I like your energy today. And I really feel like I want to hang around you longer. And I wish I yeah. could stay longer. And yeah. oh, you want me to be a guest in the podcast? Like, yeah, your energy is so good, like, Thanks. for sure. So. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, like, that magnetic energy, I feel like, is what you reap when you really dive into the personal development side of things for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you just said a number of things that I want to comment upon. One, yeah. let me tell you, in my seven plus years of studying personal development transformation, gratitude is one of the top themes that I mm. see with every expert in every program that I yeah. do. So take note of that. And yeah. um, your year of miracles also has a journal that okay. they ask for people to write down the miracles. Oh. That is not something that I'm that good <laughs> at, but um, that sort of didn't deter my progress, you know, yeah. through the years. But um. For people where journaling works, that's that's part of what they recommend yeah. as well. Yep. And, and gratitude is a huge piece that I see. It really is. And I think it's more so kind of to touch upon the scientific thing that you're bringing up or how there's like a scientific tie to these things that you do when it comes to journaling or mindset work. I think the like physical act of writing something down is big, but also when it comes to gratitude, say you're struggling. So for me, like... Um, this is my theme this year is discovery or like discovering like who I'm supposed to be like in this phase of my life because my life just got like flipped (laughs) upside down last year in the best and most challenging ways possible. Um, But when it comes to like, say for example, I'm like really work motivated. So when I, for example, for the podcast or the not to average prep stuff, when I'm like in that work during a nap time hustle, if he wakes up (laughs) way too early, I almost like feel that like resentment towards like, the people that I love because I'd rather I would prefer to just like finish what I'm working on mm-hmm. however that's not actually how I feel like I'm doing this passion work so that I can like lead a better life for the family and everything and f- I everything I do is for them and myself but it's like I have to kind of like fine-tune that mindset of like 
okay, like he's crying because he needs me, and this is not, it's not because it's like an inconvenience, like that kind of thing. I totally understand it. Yeah. We may need to do another podcast together <laughs> because what oh, yeah. you're saying now um, <laughs> is leading into a whole other passion I have, yeah. which is self awareness through understanding your strengths. Mm. And you may be describing a number in your Enneagram that I would not have guessed that you have, really? but is actually similar to Jess. You definitely have one of the softer ones, which yeah. I think connects to your gems. Mm. pearl piece or the yeah. one that's like <laughs> wanting to help other people and being like a soft gentle person yeah. but you might be describing another piece that might come out in your enneagram so anyway stay tuned everyone for <laughs> yeah. a we're gonna have like 10 different podcasts there's too much about to talk about <laughs> strengths based pieces but you did just say something that we had talked about touching upon which is something else that i had no idea existed was this idea of energy mm and your vibration now i am not a science person <laughs> me neither there's a lot Our, about i do love like anatomy and things of that nature but i when it comes to like chemistry math all of that <laughs> no, i had to get a tutor through like <laughs> most of high school and college for those pieces but yeah there is this realm of quantum physics that mm -hmm. through all the experts i've been studying i've been kind of dipping my toe into understanding yeah um, the most basic pieces I mean, if any of you like the whole Marvel and DC universe, they kind of touch about, you know, the quantum verses and yeah. how time, you know, so some of the ideas you're seeing in, in entertainment. But something very basic that I think is good to think about when you're thinking about the beginning of the year, mm. what you want your goals to be, your intentions, your themes, what you want to manifest, noticing and having awareness of where your energy is at, especially when you're sitting right. down to have these planning sessions. Like, yeah. I didn't even used to know that was a thing that you thought about but right. um if you actually just google emotional scale there's a lot of different versions that you can find but basically there's been research done that all these different feelings like shame and guilt are the lowest uh -huh. have a certain like brainwave frequency that can yeah. be measured and then it goes through to the one that's at the top is joy and bliss huh and then there's kind of a midpoint where it's either you have the courage or the willingness to move in the positive direction so something that i think is interesting to think about is when you're reflecting upon the past year which by the way is part of your planning you don't yeah. just like jump in and say okay 2023 right, no. like well, <laughs> well wait like what happened in 2023 yeah. what were some of my wins my meaningful moments yep. my challenges what did i learn who yeah. was in my support system mm -hmm. how am i feeling now what kind of setup am I going to do for my planning sessions? Yeah. And then you reflect back and then, you know, right. and then what you, you want to manifest forward. And, right, yeah. yeah. I am big into that. And I would typically do a deep dive reflection monthly. And, again, just something that I didn't touch base on this past year. But I was really, really grateful to have an awesome reflection session from the past year into the year ahead. And... I think that was the week my energy was so different because it just feels so good to like accept and release like what you no longer want and then dream big and plan for like what's ahead. You just said something so good, which is um, <laughs> one of the other things we didn't mention that I'm completely obsessed with is hot yoga, yes. which I do at Rhode Island Power Yoga in North Kingstown. Yeah. And actually what this class is about primarily is breath management. Mm -hmm. And one of the main teachings is... Um, you know the quote, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional? Yes. For the longest time, I was like, what do you mean? I don't get that. Like, what do you mean suffering is optional? Like, I'm suffering all the time. Like, I don't get it. Right. But, oh, I don't know. I've been doing, this is year 22 of yoga. So yeah. it took me, like, decades to be like, oh, wait, I, I think I sort of get it. What, <laughs> what they teach is yeah. what you're resisting. Mm -hmm. The resistance is worse than the thing you're resisting. Yeah. And that you suffer because you do not accept your reality. Yeah. So you said something about like the accepting and the releasing that is such yeah. a huge piece to be like, I'm a seven on the Enneagram, which means I'd like to escape pain at all gotcha. costs. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for me to sit down and be like, this is really how old you are. This is really how much you gotcha. weigh. This is what's happening with your job status, your relationship status. It's a process for me, which is why I've had to do 22 years of yoga to be like, okay, <laughs> that's accept reality <laughs> and suffer less. <laughs> Once you accept it, right? Yeah, and so yeah. um, that acceptance piece is huge and something I hear a lot about. Yeah, I love that. My travels. Love it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we already, I'm trying to touch, we had a lot we wanted to talk about, but we touched base on your miracles already. Um, and then setting the theme, I kind of already mentioned mine, is discover for mm -hmm. this year. Discovering mm -hmm. who I am, who I want to be, how I want to show up for others. Another thing is like not giving a fuck, honestly, <laughs> about 
You should how other... those books, the subtle art <laughs> yes. of not giving a fuck. Like, there's yeah. a whole series that's right. on my list of yeah. ones to read. I am a, like, deep-rooted people pleaser, and that is something that I've been really been working on the past couple of years, releasing expectations, um, not caring about what, how others are influencing my work, because that was, like, a big thing. Like, comparison is the thief of joy, as cheesy as that is. But really just kind of, like, staying in my own lane, like, making sure I'm doing what I need to do and what's best for, like, us as a family and as, like, my entrepreneurial business, I guess. Um, But still also, like, being open to feedback and advice from the people that I know, like, will benefit me in a positive way and – or not benefit me because that sounds, like, user-ish, but I, like – they're going to help you to up-level and to live your best life right. is probably what yes, you mean. Yes, in a non-judgmental way, in like an empowering way. And I think a big part of being an entrepreneur is like you have to be accepting of that positive feedback because if you don't take the feedback, then like you're never going to learn and grow either. Okay, this is a whole other topic that we can use for a separate day. There's a couple things I want to say. One, everybody, I want you to remember these things. Two, three, and eight. Two, three, and eight. Okay. Our numbers that I think down. are on... Um, you're mentioning things like two and eight specifically, but it could be also the three. That's the entrepreneurial piece that you're referring to. And then there's another woman that I studied. Her name is Christina Rilo. She taught me a lot about um, self-love. Yeah. And she wrote a whole book about your inner mean girls. And I think she based it on the Enneagram giving names to these inner mean girl archetypes. And one of them is the comparison queen. Gotcha. So that might have been one at some point that comes up high for you. I love to speed read what I think he pulls. And I guess what Jessica's was. That that was the book she read, right? I was going to ask. I I don't know what the book she read, but I I told her what I thought her numbers were. And then she took the test one day when I was there. And she was like, you're right. The numbers were correct. So anyways. um, So so I wanted to talk about just in reflection of that. And then as a separate note, Another topic that I'm so obsessed with, this is in my people and culture world. This mm. is just a little tidbit, and then you can remember this to do a separate session yeah. on later. Do you know the word feedback activates the fight, flight, and freeze part of your brain? I mean, if someone I says believe to you, it. I need to give you some feedback, yes. your yes. defense is going up, and you're like, whoa. Yeah. And Josh usually, and I joke about it. Yeah. Can we say it because it's, have you ever watched the, um, oh, I forget the name, Wine Country? No. It's a funny, like, I? rom-com. Yeah. And <laughs> Wait, maybe this, I have seen There's it. this, like, older woman. They're, or they're all, like, Are they're the not friends old. that go there to do yeah. something? Yeah, some but one of them's kind of like a geeky psychologist vibe. And she goes, can I offer you some feedback? <laughs> yeah. That's, like, the but worst thing But it's, like, a super say. awkward experience always throughout the entire movie whenever that is said. <laughs> well, anyway. What is a better just, way to word it? Well, it's a whole, it's connected to another person that I've studied extensively. His name is Marcus Buckingham. He's like yeah. the founder of the Strengths Based Revolution, and I use a lot of his work in my people and culture part of my yeah. passions. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, it's about understanding in the context of managing other people, but it kind of extends to any relationship yeah. that you're having. At first, you have to build trust mm-hmm. that you're going to show anyone whether it's your direct reporter or friend or family member i care about you as a person right and you have to build that trust so mm-hmm. that way when someone notices that you should be on this trajectory but you're starting to veer off course yeah that they're going to offer you course correction in a loving way got it but you have to build the trust first and, and part of what yeah. we teach through marcus's training is that you have a strengths-based assessment you take the time to get to know what are your strengths mm-hmm. naturally what are the places where your brain synapses just didn't connect so you're not going to be good at those things but it doesn't mean you're not a it doesn't mean you're a bad person it right. just means your strengths are in a different place and it's yeah the manager's job for example to make sure you're doing work that is within that strength zone yeah but <clears throat> once you have that foundation built it does mean it doesn't still hurt for sensitive people to get the feedback yeah. but the goal is for people to make a change, to be able to receive it enough that they can be like, okay, what's the golden nugget of wisdom? It's still painful mm-hmm. to be reminded I'm human and not perfect and that yeah. sucks. <laughs> but yes. this person cares about this. Like, what might be true about what they're saying? Right. And after this, this came up once in my theater history. Oh, really? Where I had worked with this theater company for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years at this point, and I was playing Velma in Chicago. That's so fun. Musical that a lot of people know, but it was a, it was a lot of pressure. This was like a really good theater. Yeah. And I had worked with the music director. Um, I don't know five or six shows. I had known him really well. Yeah. So I knew he cared about me as a person, 
And at one point, he gave me feedback tech week in front of everybody. And I was also uh, older than a lot of the people in the show. And he was like, Joanna, why are you pushing so hard with your voice? You have a microphone. Let Mr. Mike do his job. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm just trying to give show energy. And he goes, well, it looks like you're in high school, which what? was not a compliment. No. And I was like, okay. So in like... <laughs> The space of a millisecond, I was like, okay, my God, this is so embarrassing. Yeah. I really want to run away and also quit the show. Mm -hmm. But Michael knows me so well, and I know he cares about me as a person, and that's the job of directors and musical directors and choreographers is to tell you, you can't see what they can see. He's seeing that I'm doing something that looks bad. Yeah. So I think he wants me to be successful. So, like, (laughs) maybe what he's saying is true, and so I'm going to accept that feedback. And so the old me. Yeah. Would have definitely created a whole scene, been very dramatic, ran off. You were dramatic. Oh my god! Well, my, that's one of my um, my passion from the fascinate uh, fascinated us when I was telling you about. Yeah. When you double the passion, the shadow archetypes of that is being dramatic and oh, very sensitive okay. and just like theatrical and emotional, yeah. but in like a dramatic way. So like yes. Gotcha. <laughs> um, but anyways, the point is, I was able to receive his feedback, and we talked about. I was monitoring my volume all the time, so I was able to make the changes he was asking for. Yeah. Even though he sort of did it in a public way, which, like, maybe that didn't need to happen. Yeah. Maybe it did whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is we had built the trust. I right. knew he cared about me. I knew he wanted for my success. And so when he needed to give me the course correction for me to be my best, yeah. I could hear what he was saying yep. and make the change. Yeah. Anyways, that's a side note. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's an important thing for people to know. When people say they want to give you feedback, they just yes. don't know what's the wrong thing to say. Because yes. that's not something that's widespread yet. Yeah. But I want to go back to our talking about planning for the year. Yes. Which I'm um, about setting the themes because yes. we were talking about some of your themes. Yep. So uh, in your year of miracles, you set a theme for each year. And like, yep. weird things started happening, which my first theme was unconditional self-love. Like, okay. Things are always two words. Gotcha. And that year is when I came became exposed to Christina Rilo, A R Y L O, who has a pa- uh, self love certification, okay. path of self love program, which I signed up for. Of course. Then yes. the next year, I was very innocent and naive, <laughs> and the theme I picked was so funny in retrospect, um, joyful transformation. And then my <laughs> life blew up in October of that year. And let me tell you, there is. Not that much that's joyful about transforming. It's actually very painful. Yeah. Um, until you up level and look back and say, oh, my God, I'm so glad I went through right. all the pain that I did. But, like, in the moment, I was like, why did I pick these two words together? Like, yes. that, this that is not was a it. funny situation. <laughs> um, so then year three, I did Magical Adventures. And, by the way, I think these themes are always still present. I'm, like, building yeah. upon them. Um, year four was Graceful Surrender, which was the year of COVID, which I didn't oh. know was coming right. when I picked That's it that year. Yeah. So, um, and then I picked Exquisite Intimacy. Then I started getting into alliteration, so Magnificent Manifestations was next. And Breathtaking Brilliance was last year. Wow. I'm just impressed that you remember them all. Well, because you think about it for the whole year. It's like oh, very present right. in the way and you have this miracles. monthly meetup, right? Because the way you were saying you do the monthly reflections, yes. you're always thinking on a daily basis, what's my theme? Got it. And you set free intention for the year. Okay. So it's something that, I mean, after seven years, it's just sort of always present in your right. mind what yeah. that's going to be. Um, so then this year, there's like a couple I'm throwing around, Sacred Sovereignty is Ooh, one. Okay. Uh, extraordinary Expansion is one. Powerful Perseverance is another. Ooh, those are a couple that I love those. I'm into the alliteration still. Yes. So uh, <laughs> usually it takes me a couple weeks into January to figure it out. So that's yeah. one thing to think about. Some people do one word. Yep. Some people do like, I'm dramatic, so I want it to have like a juicy of adjective course. in front of the, yeah. the actual word that I'm thinking of. So um, so that's one thing to think about yeah. doing to like anchor yourself for right. like, what am I going to keep coming back to? Yeah. The lady Marcy who created the program um, has a friend who paints the world in a rock every year. So oh, she that's has like so the rock fun. on her desk as yeah. like a, you know, like a reminder. symbol to like remind her. Yeah. And I think something powerful to note too is you mentioned you take a couple weeks to think about it. I think it's a whole month. January is a whole month of planning. I feel like a lot of people feel pressure to like have their year planned out like day one. Girl, please, I didn't even crack open my planner until (laughs) Sunday, which was like January (laughs) seventh or eighth. I was like, Oh my god, I'm already eight days behind. Right, right. So I think 
don't put so much pressure on yourself. Take the month of January to really cast vision for the year ahead and think about what you want to manifest or achieve. And do we want to go in? I mean, I did. I had setting three intentions. Um, yeah, I don't, there is something interesting that I want to tell people about, yeah. which I think is juicy. And I yeah? also didn't used to know. So they also teach you this idea of creating intentions based on your soul versus okay. your ego. So oh. I will give you a perfect example. Okay. In year one, I would be like, I want to lose 20 pounds and be back to a size four <laughs> like my star of show body that I had when I was in Chicago. Yeah. That is an ego-based intention because <laughs> why 20 pounds? Why a size? Like, how do I know that's my best version of my health? And right. so what they teach you is um, to a soul-based intention would be I am radiant and vibrant health. Radiant health for me might be weighing 150 pounds at 5'2". Yeah. Right. Now, my ego self would be like, girl, oh my God, you weighed 120 every time you were on stage doing a sexy yeah. part. So, like, my ego can't, like, comprehend. Right. But people thought my head looked too big for my body, which was, like, a little bit true. And I had no boobs, <laughs> and, like, my ribs were sticking out. And oh so, like, gosh. I actually didn't get good feedback when I weighed 120, so I'm yeah. pretty sure... That is not radiant and vibrant health, right? Gotcha. So that was something that I was like, oh my God, I never thought about setting an intention yeah, yeah. based from your soul. Yeah. So and I think, I mean, I don't, don't know how much you weigh. I don't want you no, to No, it's actually 150. That. Oh. <laughs> that actually is the place where I'm but at you right have like now. beautiful curves, and I feel like you are very balanced in that way, and you own it. You, you Girl, walk in the club you and you're with sports my bra. bra. <laughs> I usually come to your home booty. after hot yoga, and even when it's. 10 degrees out. I'm still yeah. sweating from class. Yeah. I change yeah. in the bathroom when they make my shake, and I got a bra and my tight pants on, and I'm full of yeah. sweat. Yeah. And they always see me looking like my most yeah. yes. natural, Hair done glowing. and makeup <laughs> is a rare rare present presence for us, too, yeah, so like enjoy that. never seen this live. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was something that helped me to come to terms with feeling more understanding of like what does radiant health mean yeah for me? right exactly defining certain things like for yourself I'm also so hungry all the time. like the reason I weighed 120 is because I didn't eat because yeah. I was so busy running around rehearsing but also I was scared about people's judgment of like because I'm so short I'm five too like me yeah. looking like a teacup like short and stout and so gotcha. then I just like didn't eat <laughs> Like, I would do whole performances or double shows with, like, no food. It was so dumb. I don't know how you do it. So, anyway. We're still working on getting to eat more. I'm going to feed her dinner after this. (laughs) Actually, that's something we always laugh about at Elevate. I'm like, I want to lose weight. And the very first thing you said was, you got to eat more. And I was like, ooh. She always pushes me out of my comfort zone. She wants me to have different shakes every day and eat more food. But that's why I like the energy of our connection because I like to be in the safe space of people who, like, love you enough to like be able to push you and we yeah. you can do it and laugh right that, that's really like the best situation <laughs> yeah absolutely so that's one thing about um setting intentions and then something else i didn't understand was the power of your words mm. so this something else i wanted to mention about manifestation as well as actually the secret i had been exposed to yeah before your year of miracles yeah what i didn't understand is they're like oh the secret's easy ask believe receive and i was like okay great so Asking, by the way, is yeah. part of your planning. Yeah. That tells the universe what, what are your intentions, right. what are your desires. But the believing and the receiving part, I learned through my seven years of your year in miracles that mm-hmm. for women particularly, but for all people, the number one limiting belief is I'm not worthy and I'm not good enough. Yeah, for So sure. to believe, that's actually like wicked hard to do. It is. Because you then yeah. have to believe you're worthy of receiving, and right. then receiving is a whole separate thing because most feminine energy people are trained to give yep absolutely and so receiving is also an issue so actually the whole manifestation process connects so much to the energy and being aligned to your soul and believing that you're worthy of receiving these things when you're setting it and so there's a lady called florence scoble shin who wrote on you can get the whole complete works the game of life your word is your wand and she talked about the importance of saying the right words. Ooh. It's also something they teach in your year of miracles that okay. sometimes when people are setting intentions, they'll say, well, I want radiant health or I mm-hmm. want to have financial freedom. But yeah. when you say the word I want, that tells the universe you want to be in a state of wanting. Got it. So very important when you're mm-hmm. setting intentions to say I am. Yeah. Yeah. So that it's an I am statement so that you're, you're already acting as if you have, mm-hmm. which is one of the tips of manifesting yes. to act as if you have. Right. I love that. And I have definitely heard that verbiage is huge. And I think 
the scientific portion again when you're trying to rework your inner mono <clears throat> inner monologue mm-hmm. that goes into that as well like the words that you speak also is like an internal dialogue that you kind of have to fine tune in order to like believe at your core not well, just like on a surface level and you know um Gabby Bernstein, yep, who I love I'm her. also <laughs> connected to her. So she's written books about the universe has your back, which is mm-hmm. really, that's actually I love a really that good thing to understand. And yeah. She has different decks of cards where mm-hmm. we'll have like an affirmation every day. Love that. And um, one of the ones that I pulled today had something to do with this idea of believing that you're worthy of like creating a re- reality that like yeah. exceeds your wildest expectations mm-hmm. and knowing that's what you deserve and that the universe has your back and yeah you that's know, one of my um, go-to sayings honestly the universe has your back yes yep if i'm having a really hard time i will go through and reverse like any negative thoughts going in my head and create them into like a positive affirmation of some kind and then i'll always just say like just know like the universe always has your back another statement is um rejection is the universe's protection rejection or mm. redirection okay and that's one because um later on in future sessions you'll see when we talk about my results i'm always the people sensitive feeling mm-hmm. one so like rejection is like not good for people yeah, of my either. brains <laughs> i don't hear like, yeah, well <laughs> if you're a two on the enneagram yeah. um then definitely that would be the case too and so it's very difficult for me in the moment but yeah. that is a saying that has helped me to get through. Because think about it, everyone. Think about the first person that you loved, that you thought was going to be your life partner and your soulmate, and you prayed and prayed and prayed to you, yes. please make this happen. How you look back and you're like, Thank God. oh my God. <laughs> Ew. And also, what was I thinking? And I yes. would be the most unhappy and horrible version of right. myself ever. So sometimes in hindsight, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, thank you, universe, for not having me with this person right. or many more that came after or you yeah. can see in retrospect I didn't you know this one job I was so devastated about not getting ended up being a job that was traveling to all these exotic locations and COVID came eight months later oh okay so the job that I had allowed me to um stay a little bit longer before I had yeah. the layoff because it was senior housing so they were so gotcha. busy being connected to COVID so in retrospect yeah. I'm like well thank god I didn't get this job that right like <laughs> The founder had hugged me and said, okay, we have to find a way to make this happen. So I yeah. thought for sure the job was going to happen. It's like, I couldn't, I'm like, the rejection? What do you mean? She hugged yes. me and she said we had to find a way to right. make it work. I'm like, I don't, what the heck, you know? I had this in the bag. This. Yeah. <laughs> and so it just made the rejection that much more devastating. Yeah. But sometimes the hindsight doesn't come. Yeah, until afterwards, for Sometimes sure. it's taken me 10 years to manifest. Yeah. Like my Chicago situation. I had been auditioning for either Roxy or Velma for 10 years. Really? To the point where I didn't even believe I was worthy of those two roles. And I used to have the ego-based intention. <laughs> in 2013, I just wanted to lose 10 pounds. I'm like, oh, if I'm in a show where you're a cell block tanker girl. So I just said I yeah. wanted to be any part you want to give me. And I just, I wanted them to not put me in ensemble. I wanted to be one of the cell block yep. tangle girls. And so, um... <laughs> I think because I didn't care, and I sort of had that really attitude. expectation, maybe? I had no expectation. I was yeah. like, I'm never going to get it. All the A players of, like, the theatrical community were there because yeah. this theater is a very good theater. So, like, mm-hmm. I never thought it was going to be me. Even when it kept getting, was so stressful, like, okay, yeah. these people stay. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my God, is my name going to be on the list? That's and I was like, crazy. I'm going to down to yeah. the final four. That's which a stressful process. It's very stressful. It's very vulnerable. And They're I feel, judging everything about how you look. Yeah. I feel like that's a very comparative process. It's yeah. It's um very character building. <laughs> In any case, I, I I just was like so focused on am I gonna be a cell block tango? Yeah. Top, sister, or switch lip shits, like which one of those am I gonna be? <laughs> like I don't wanna be ensemble that yeah. the next day I had a doctor's appointment, I was on the train. Yeah. And I'm like because you know, our topic is manifestation. Yeah. This is one of, I think, my greatest manifestations. Because to give a little history, 10 years prior, um, someone I was very, very close to was directing a show. They mm-hmm. did not cast me, a production of Chicago. I yeah. was not cast, but we lived together, and they didn't tell me in person. Really? That was just a value that I could not recover from. That I'm like, mm, okay, but you are as close as we were, like, you do that face-to-face. So, like, my brain was just, like, and plus the rejection. I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? (laughs) Spiraling. And, um, 
and through one of the fights, which probably they didn't mean it at the time, but in one of the fights, they were like, you're not good enough to be the lead. And so that was a limiting belief I carried yeah. with me for quite a time. And then I had tried to audition a couple other times and would come close, but didn't get it, which is why yeah. I'm like, eh, I guess I'm not, I started to believe I'm not good enough. Yeah. So then I'm like, I had my like OBGYN appointment and I'm on the train and people are like, the rejection notice just went out. And I was like, okay, you know, okay. I yeah. wasn't even checking yeah. to see. So like, this can wait until after my appointment. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, I guess I'm not, a, I didn't get the rejection email. So then I check again and it was like, congratulations to the cast. And sometimes they call you or sometimes you get an email. Yeah. And it said at the top, Velma, Joanna Perry. And I was like, who's Joanna Perry? And I was like, wait, I think that's you. And then I was tracing the line to be like, I just, <laughs> my brain was like, it's funny. I'm like, is wait, that did your this name? actually yeah, And I'm tracing the line and then I had to call because like, yeah. I had worked with the theater so many times. I'm like, is this true? Yeah. And they were like, yes. And I was crying so much that the doctor, my blood pressure was higher than it ever been. I was like crying, <laughs> telling her the news. And I had this Lululemon top that like, it had a bra, but then it had this bottom part and it had yeah. all these straps. And I was so discombobulated that I couldn't get the shirt back on. Oh so gosh. I left with a sweater and no bra to mind. That was big into Zumba That then. is hilarious. And the Zumba guy was like, can you untangle my shirt? I was like, I can't even get it on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then my whole... Zumba community came, like, 30 people came my second oh, night to, like, so support fun. me. So, anyway, sometimes the manifestations, everyone, take... Take time. Take 10 years of yeah. still working your craft and honing your craft and putting yourself right. out there. But another interesting point to note, which I had no plans of bringing this up, but <laughs> I was a late bloomer in my theater endeavors because my brother mm-hmm. is a prodigy. He's mm-hmm. worked with all famous Broadway people. He gotcha. was a Broadway conductor for 15 years. I should do a whole separate podcast about being the sister of like a prodigy gifted person. But in any case, I was a super late bloomer. But when we were kids, we were always listening to like Broadway tapes in the car. (laughs) And Chicago was one of them, by the way. Yeah. And um, (laughs) Chicago was one of the shows. And I would design and choreograph with me and starring roles very secretly. Nobody knew I was doing this for years. That's awesome. I had visions of me. Yep. And I was like, that only feels good to do in my brain. And my dad used to try to pay me $50 to be in a Christmas photo. Oh and gosh. I was like, peace. Yeah. And also, they're like, no. <laughs> $50 back then was so much. Like, how right? dumb was I to be doing this, right? Yeah. And so the point being, like, I did not believe this was possible. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, with um, living with someone who was just so amazingly naturally gifted. Yeah. So it happened later in life. But I think all those years of me envisioning. Mm-hmm. So having the vision and like imagining yourself doing yep. it was something I did for decades. Yeah. That when I got to Babson, which was a business school, so I didn't have a lot of competition to like make it real. Mm-hmm. But I was in the ensemble of the first show and then I had a huge lead in the second show. Yeah. But people had no idea. I had like zero training. Right. And I think it's because I spent so much time envisioning. Yep. Yep what this was going to look like there's been several podcasts or programs that i've dove into that envisionment or taking that time to meditate i guess in a way and envision uh your dream home your career doing a the vision boards we did last year at elevated nutrition right same thing yep everything it's huge and uh yeah i don't think that that like delayed gratification piece all in divine timing is what i always say (laughs) Um, I don't think I really started to reap the benefits of my journaling practice or my personal development work until like years in, just like you. Years. Because it, it's kind of superficial at first because it like feels awkward and weird. And then once you find your groove, I feel like that's when like the magic really starts to happen because you start to believe in like what you're practicing. And I had thought about some of the things that I've definitely manifested a couple interesting things in my lifetime. But I think definitely, this, yeah. Didn't something interesting happen with your wedding or something? Yeah, I won my wedding dress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, I entered like a Pinterest sweepstakes. <laughs> Not something that you would ever think you would actually like, win. People even win those things. You just right? assume nobody even wins. They're yeah. just trying to get you to like sign up for something. Yeah, but we were we were very fortunate. Both of our parents were super giving as far as like making our dream wedding possible. But we were responsible for like the vendors and like the wedding dress and things of that nature. And so I had just fallen in love with Maki Satoro, the designer, but her dresses are like five grand and up. So I'm like, this is not <laughs> ideal. This is clearly vision purpose only. 
And then I just happen to be on Pinterest browsing, and they're like, oh, like, join this sweepstakes. So you have to, you had to tell about your love story and whatever, and maybe because, like, the whole blind date thing, we stood out or whatever. And I got the email saying that I won, and it was asking for my social security number and all this stuff. So I was like, this is sketch. I knew this was not legitimate. <laughs> like, you I, won a cruise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, like, you didn't really win a cruise. Right. So I emailed at least, like, three times, and then I call confirmed at least twice. And then I was like, I think this is it. But she would not give me any confirmation or schedule an appointment with a local vendor without my social security number. So it was, like, really a leap of faith. <laughs> But then when she mentioned, like, she already looked into, like, the bridal garden or whatever that was close by, I was you like, okay. You had to use like, your think, intuition to be yeah, like, Yeah, okay. like, okay, I think I actually won this thing. Yeah, so I got my wedding dress, like, completely free, and that was pretty cool. This house was really interesting also. So Josh and I had actually attempted to get pre-approved for a home. Uh, I want to say we got our house in 2020. It was at least two years prior to when we got this house. Mm-hmm. But we didn't get pre-approved. We got pre-approved for like 30 grand because we had a bunch of, we had like eight grand in credit card debt. We didn't have a big savings. So again, the universe oh, had totally our back normal, at that point. By the way. Yes. Um, the universe had our back at that point. We were able to make a plan with the mortgage lender. He told us what we kind of had to fine tune. And we just like kind of swallowed some pride. We moved out of our apartment into his parents' house, made those changes to pay off the debt and save that we needed to do in order to achieve that dream. So that's the other thing too, I think with manifesting, it's not like you're just like wishing away these thoughts, like you actually have to put in aligned action for the magic to happen. Uh, that's, they talk <laughs> about all the time, um, we call it like taking your inspired actions, yeah. but, but you have to get up off the couch. Right, like, like it's not just gonna happen be like, because oh, you're dreaming I hard. I start a show and meet my soulmate and get the job that I want. And then never leave your couch or house and just, like, stream all day. Right, like, exactly. So you have to take steps to tell the universe, I am serious. Like, I set the intention. I asked for it. I've done the inner work to believe yeah. that it can happen. I know that receiving is an important part of the giving-receiving cycle. You have right. to do both to make it meaningful. Because when you reject receiving, you're insulting the giver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. okay, you're working on all those things. <laughs> yes. You still have to take your inspired actions. And by the way, it's, like, daily. Right, absolutely. Like, if you want to have radiant health, there's usually a daily practice of either yeah. actively choosing to rest for the day or yeah. going to the gym or yoga or whatever you're right. getting your 10,000 steps in. Yeah. Whatever your jam is, it's very consistent right. and deliberate and intention behind. Exactly. What are the little steps I take every day that yep. will tell the universe I'm serious and then... Yeah. And divine timing is such a tricky thing. It is. Some some of my things have taken, like I told you, decades. Yeah. Like I sat in the car and secretly envisioned, like, my family was... Nobody knew that I could sing. Really? She asked because I was like, I'm not going to compare myself. My comparison queen was fierce. Yeah. She was like, do not get up and compete with your brother. Yeah. So I was like, hell no. Mm-hmm. But we used to sing in, in secret after my parents had gone to bed. And I'm like, gotcha. but I sounded good because I was singing with him. Oh. And then I used to go on these youth trips to meet boys. <laughs> I still like the spiritual piece too, but I'm just being real with you. Yeah. And I had a divine intervention, which sometimes I think it's like a bitch lot from the universe. Yeah. Feeling like you're taking too long. Yeah. And they had a talent show. Like, I used to cry giving speeches. I always got 100, but, like, I hate yeah. if I didn't believe in myself. And yep. I had, I don't I'm know sorry. how to explain it. The universe was like, you will sing a song. And I'm yeah. like, well, these people don't know my brother. Yeah. They're not comparing me to him. I sang a cappella, which is, like, not something I normally do. Yeah. And so I practiced with one kid, and he was like, yeah, do it. And then, then I sang, and <laughs> then I started crying, and people were like, No. That was good. Not just, yeah. like, oh, good job. They were like, yeah. Joanna. I You're talented. Like, there might be something to this. And so then we used to have talent shows um, at Christmas. We had Matt who could play anything. Yeah. And since we have would have our secret sessions, and I was like, can we sing a song at, at Christmas? Yeah. And people were like, what in the actual fuck? Because I was like, pretty good. <laughs> right. My mother was crying. Yeah, all your my shit. sister was jumping up and down. It's a Christmas my cousin miracle. came to hug me. They were like, oh, my God. So then I was like, oh. I'm a senior in high school. Yeah. So also nobody at school knows. So right. then they had the first annual talent show, Divine Timing, that year. No way. And I said to um, this woman, Mrs. Pridham, I'm like, can, my brother went to a private school, yep. which is what he needed to do for his talents. And I'm mm-hmm. like, can he do it with me, even being at a different school? Yeah. And she must have known. She was like, yes. 
And then we won. And again, people no like, Joanna, way. what the hell? You're graduating in two months and we didn't know right. you could do this. I'd be like, my God, me neither. But it took like a, <laughs> all those years of like the secret manifesting. Right. And then when I was too slow, the universe, I don't know. I can't. Yeah, it just it, happened. It came in so strong that yeah. like I couldn't ignore that I had to take that leap of faith. Right. And that I was getting the right feedback. I mean, do you think that wasn't scary to sing in front of all these people? Yeah. With my brother, by yeah. the way, who Your was also playing the comparison. piano. Yeah, yeah. To be yeah. like. Okay, you're scary, but like, also, I need you to like yeah. <laughs> catapult to yeah. make this happen. And I think people also push like, me off the cliff. Yeah, I think they also like the brother sister vibe. I'm like, okay, yeah. we have that going for us as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but that was like really terrifying. Yeah. So like every time you, the inspired actions aren't always comfortable, mm-hmm. or the things you try to push me to right. do do not feel comfortable. But yeah. that's when you kind of use your intuition to say, well, I have to take like an Indiana Jones yes. when he has to cross <laughs> that canyon and the clues say you have to take the step forward you have to take the leap to faith and he's yeah. like i'm gonna fall down onto this cliff yeah. and then he takes a step and the sand shows yeah the bridge is visually built into it looks like you're gonna fall right, there's right. actually something there so i always yeah. think about like taking that leap of faith but anyways the point being my divine timing is like decades yeah like i waited 10 plus years yeah to be brave enough to step foot on stage yeah. i waited 10 years to realize i could be a decent now by the way my friend was not wrong. The things she didn't like about my audition were like <laughs> still true. I have yeah. like chicken arms and I'm a singer who dances and most people in Chicago cast dancers who sing. So yeah. she was correct in a lot of her assessments. Maybe Got the it. delivery of the bad news, but like who knows how to do that? Nobody yeah. is everybody's <laughs> conflict averse. Yeah. She's a good person. She has a good heart. We learned our karmic lessons through yeah. it. Actually she's one of the people I bumped into oh, no when way. I started your year of That's miracles. Awesome. Crazy. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um to kind of like bring that story yes. full circle. So um, divine timing is a huge piece. And yeah. so don't give up. I mean, I've had right. the same three intentions all seven years of your year of miracles. Oh, really? Yeah. And so, what are those? Um, my first intention is <laughs> I am inspiring significant contributions to the happiness of others in a fun and loving way. I love that. So that's the stuff we're doing now. Yeah, the, the stuff, stuff we always, always talk about it. Elevated yeah. the stuff I try to do basically everywhere. Yep, yep. Um, the, the second one is I bask in financial freedom. I love that. If you know being a seven on the Enneagram, it does not bode well for that. So um, <laughs> <laughs> those are some of my shadows and shortcomings. So uh, that's one still in the making. Yeah. And um, I perceive that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one is that I'm ecstatically happy, blissfully content, and deeply peaceful in a conscious, committed relationship with my soulmate. Oh. I had jotted some down, but I'm going to have to fine tune those and have you rework them. <laughs> well, remember, I've been reworking yes. these for like over They didn't start yeah. out that yes. way, but. Yes. Two years in your year of miracles, they had inner circle where you get one-on-one coaching sessions. Oh, that's started. nice. So they helped me to rework. Gotcha. Those didn't just come out like, oh, year one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm inspired, but you know. Yeah. Uh, they didn't come out that way. It yes. took a lot of work to get them. So I set big ones. Yeah. Like some people have made fun of them being too big, but yeah. I don't care because I know that my manifestations are sometimes decades in the right. making. Like yeah. I know that's what I want. And yep. If I'm not meant to... Bask in financial freedom yet, and I have to learn some more lessons. Okay, right. I get it, or to like meet my person. Yep, I do have faith that it will happen in divine yeah. time, and that I have to keep taking the steps. Yep. Please, if I were to have met my soulmate or person twenty years ago, we never yeah. would have made it because I wouldn't have been the right person in mm-hmm. the right place. And yeah, so. and that's big to recognize also when you are maybe upset about something not working out, but then coming to that realization that it's all for the better or in divine timing? No. No? I'm not saying now. Oh, now. Now. <laughs> Let me tell you, sometimes it takes me three years to realize someone's not the right person. So mm-hmm. I'll, <laughs> the teacher teaches because they most need to learn these things. Oh. So you should feel good taking advice from mm-hmm. the likes of us who have studied these things. Yes. That means we had to learn all these things yes. we had to study them. To be able to teach them, yep. so oh, I've made all the mistakes that could yes, possibly be made, right. which is why I like to be like, let me, you not make the same mistakes that I made, yes. let me try to help you learn from the mistakes that I've right. made. So sometimes um, I'm slow coming to those conclusions, mm-hmm. but these past seven years, and, and plus the 22 of doing yoga, having the tools to help a sensitive empath on planet mm-hmm. Earth at this time is like, <laughs> <laughs> not the easiest thing to do yeah. but having the tools for personal development mm-hmm. from the spirit inspired actions and understanding things like gratitude and manifestation and divine yeah. time has made a huge 
difference right. in how I think about what do I want this year For sure. to look like. Yeah. And that's why I like to go to Elevated Nutrition because for <laughs> someone like me having support mm-hmm. where you can go and be like, hey, I'm not having a good day today. Yeah. <laughs> or, can we hey, talk it through? Yeah. I am having a good day. Let's just sit and have like awesome energy. Yeah, and, let's dance it out. Like you guys have no <laughs> idea. Sometimes we go in. If you talk about raunchy and spicy, some yeah. of these conversations we're having in between customers, it's oh, like yeah. so juicy and so yeah. hilarious, and I just leave like my vibe is high. Yeah, just like vibe is always high. Vibe is high. The raunchy, <laughs> the spicy. Yeah, that has been our connection. But yeah. to find your circles of support, yeah, is to big. help you is also key. Yeah, to help you manage through the natural ups and downs. Right, and actually, ups. circling back to a thought, I'm proud of myself because at this hour, I'm. <laughs> Almost sleeping on the couch. (laughs) So to remember this point, um, going back to rejection for a hot second, my people pleaser, deep rooted thing that I've been working on is releasing like toxic people out of my life. But that also means accepting rejection in a way because that's me saying I'm okay with this person maybe not liking me because I'm choosing to set that boundary. And that's been big for me. And not that easy. It's <laughs> such a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a recovering people pleaser as well. Mm-hmm. But this is also what I was saying before about just so many things. Why didn't school teach us? Yes. About the dance of masculine and feminine energy in mm-hmm. a relationship. If I had known that, that would have saved a lot of like fights and like stupid relationships in the past. Like that's such a basic thing we weren't taught to do that or how to effectively address conflict yeah you know how many conflict avoidant people are like roaming around the planet right now <laughs> yeah. like that's why I'm, bu- I'm busy in my people and culture job by the mm-hmm. way which is something I need to learn because what I teach at work is helping yeah all these conflicts that happen at work is mostly because this is an interesting thing that could be another topic for the future <laughs> but um topic number 25 yeah. <laughs> this idea of the golden rule that we're all taught only works in some situations. So, like, mm-hmm. one day if I'm like, oh, I'm going to pay for somebody's shake to yeah. just be nice. Oh, that's a nice example of the golden rule. Yeah. But let's say Jess, who's a very different person from me. Yeah. Um, by the way, I called her Jessica earlier, which is her name. But my other friend, Jess, who sometimes I call Jessica, called me the other day. And it was I had just dreamed about her. So it was a whole <laughs> synchronistic thing. So Jess from... From Elevated, yeah. um, she's a very different Enneagram type from me. Yeah. And so if I were to approach her in communicating mm-hmm. with the way I like to communicate, yeah. this would not be effective and we right. would end up having a conflict or a fight Yeah. because I'm communicating with her the way I like to be communicated mm-hmm. with, but she's a different person. So something right. that I also teach at work is called the Platinum Rule, which is... I have to know who I am, mm-hmm. which is why one of our topics will be self-assessment <laughs> yes. and strength-based <laughs> development. I have to know who I am. I also need some framework to be able to speed read who's the person mm-hmm. I'm with. And now how do I think about changing my language so they can receive the message I'm yes. intending to deliver? Yes. And so I call that reading the room. Because most people <laughs> aren't taught how to do this. Yeah. That's why there's all this conflict. Right. And that's why people are so afraid. Mm-hmm to address conflict because they don't know how to assess the audience. They don't know right. how to read the room. They don't even know who they are. Yeah, That's exactly. what creates all these issues. Right. But um, being able to address conflict is something that just a lot of people don't know how to do, yeah. number one. Number two, I want to tell you, I think this would actually be good as you're working on this project about releasing the people pleasing. Yeah. One of the first <laughs> experts I studied um, – her name is Cheryl Richardson, mm-hmm. and she wrote this book called Extreme Self Care. Now, my brother is a very funny person. He knows uh-huh. how to make me laugh, and he, he, I think he, he has also followed the personal development path. But yeah. for years, even before 2017, when I started this path, he'd mm-hmm. be like, "Everything happens for a reason." Like yeah. that used to be my quote, yeah. and he yeah. would like make fun of me for it, <laughs> but I didn't care because I know it's true. But mm-hmm. He'd be like, extreme self-care. Like, it was like a (laughs) worldwide wrestling foundation commercial. So uh, that was the affectionate teasing for this book. But, like, chapter two in the book is about disappointing people. Yeah. And the book recommends you practice disappointing people once per day. Really? All right. I can see that, yeah. Of releasing toxic people Mm -hmm. might mean you disappoint the person. Right. 
and that's something you have to accept if you want if you want to disconnect from that person you have to accept. removing people pleasing mm -hmm. means because people are used to you giving and giving and doing yep. all these things so if you say no what feels hard about it is you'll disappoint them right but this lady who practices extreme self-care <laughs> thinks you should practice it every yeah. day so right. that's I love that advice. A super interesting thing. And I think to that's think about. something a lot of people need to practice because we're so exposed online nowadays. Like everyone knows your shit. Like whether you're really I grew up in the eighties and nineties, so <laughs> thank God. Yeah. <laughs> All this social media didn't exist. Right. You only see my hair There's if this... I choose to show you a picture of Rob. Right, right. Yeah. I just feel like there's this extreme pressure to be a certain way, to show up a certain way. And I think because, I don't know, I feel like the exposure to everything online is a blessing and a curse. And I do see it trending in a more positive direction, but it's going to take a lot of time. You know, that's a whole other topic that we could talk about, which is, like, I enjoy Facebook. I'm old school and long-winded, as you can all tell from <laughs> today's conversation. So Instagram, mm -mm. Snapchat, no, no, that's, that's all too quick. I'm going to do six. That caption is not long enough. <laughs> five videos and also ten paragraphs to tell you what I need to tell you. But I, I like Facebook for me um, if I'm not having a, a good night mm -hmm. or I can't sleep or I'm spiraling into that negative energy. Sometimes it will back on my previous post. Oh, I love to be that, like, yeah. Okay, look at all these details that you forgot about, which is why there's 10 paragraphs. And look at all these pictures and moments, which is why there's as many pictures yeah. as I can put. <laughs> that helps to raise my vibe. Yeah. So I use it as kind of like my own personal scrapbook. But, yep. you know, i got like 100 fans that, you know, it's <laughs> funny that some of my friends are like, Joanna, too long, too many pictures. I don't even read. I just go to the pictures. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's okay. I'm not doing it for you. Yeah, right. But randomly the other day, this kid I went to college with, um, we also made it once during a um, fire alarm situation. So everybody Spicy. knew this kid was like in the room. We just made out. But anyways, this kid, <laughs> we stayed friends after. Yeah. Said on Facebook, Joanna. I mean, we haven't talked. Like, we became friends on Facebook. I didn't yeah. see you at the last reunion. Mm -hmm. I have not talked to this kid since college. Said, I love your stories. They're so positive and heartwarming. Mm -hmm. Heartwarming and yeah. life affirming. It was something along those lines. I was like. I cannot believe this is the impact, but that right. is what I like to use Facebook yeah. for. Yeah, it and is pretty cool the conversation you can have and to discover the people that are actually watching. Exactly, it was yeah. like a complete spot. I was like, oh my god, that made all all, all the teasing I get about how long <laughs> yeah. did I am worth it. Right. But the point that I'm trying to make is I try to use Facebook as something very positive. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, I'll remind people. I'm having difficulty with this. Mm -hmm. I might be presenting all the things that make me happy. Yeah. But I know the joy because I'm suffering, from, you know, pain from other losses and things that have happened that are not easy. And so every yeah. once in a while I want to remind people, I still have pain too. Right, yeah. Just because I'm showing all these positive things. For sure. That's also helping to, well, sometimes when you experience sorrow, it makes the joy that much brighter. So when mm -hmm. I'm having joyful things to present, you can feel all the happiness bursting right. from my post. But every once in a while, I want to remind people, I'm still traversing life's difficulties yeah. right along with you. Same girl. We're um, crushing it. <laughs> so, um, but if you don't remind people of this, then there's a lot of loneliness and depression. Right. That it's a clouded view. Been caused that you think everybody's having all this fun and, mm -hmm. and doing so many awesome things and like, New Year's Eve. I had done so many fun things in December. I was very blessed this <laughs> you year. Were, I was yeah. like, traveling everywhere. Um, but New Year's Eve, I don't even know if I told you this. What? I wanted to go to yoga to start my January one because that's yes. my yoga anniversary day. So that oh, was really? mandatory. I yes. Love that. that I do yoga on January first. Yeah. And it was a three hour drive. And I was supposed to come back the day before, but I was having too much fun. <laughs> the seven so I said okay I'm gonna stay and then I said okay you have to leave which means you're gonna have no plans for the countdown oh right as I was driving back I was like oh the FOMO I was like maybe I just should have stayed and not gotten a lot of sleep and just been tired of yoga and like having all these conversations mm -hmm. and I said let me try to call a couple people but everybody's gonna be busy <laughs> having fun except me and then come to find out so many people stayed in for New oh, Year's yeah. Eve I had all this like stupid FOMO for yeah. nothing and then my best friend from high school called me back at like 9.30. We caught up until 11. And then I was like, will you still be awake? You want to, I'm going to take a shower yeah. and get ready for bed. Can I FaceTime you at 11.58 and count down with you and your family? And she was like, yeah, that sounds great. So oh, like in I my t-shirt, my hair's yeah. like back. And I'm like, hey, five, four, three, two, one, happy new year. <laughs> yeah. Boom. I got to go to so bed fun. to get up for yoga. Yeah. But I think we can get lost in 
assuming everyone's having lives that are so much better than ours right. when when you actually ask around not it's, that many people had everyone has a decent amount of sock in their life exactly <laughs> they're just not exactly. showing it yeah exactly so yeah. um so anyways did we touch upon yeah i was gonna say we're just about at an hour so why don't we like recap briefly year of miracles definitely check that out if you resonated with anything that we talked about tonight yeah it i think they still like they keep like all, uh, enrollment open and they're doing this new thing this year where um they have a season, so there's an, an expert for each season. Oh, so Mike cool. Dooley, Lisa Nichols, Lynn Twist, and Sue Mortar Got it. are the four that join Marcy. And Lisa Gar used to um, work for Gaia. Yep. And so she used to interview. Like, she has 11 seasons of interviewing all these oh, wow. experts. So she's good at connecting the cool. experts for the year. So I think they keep um, enrollment open. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so check that out. Um, and if it happens to be closed or it's not something that you want to commit to, um, just dive into setting a theme for your year and setting three intentions. Remember to really pay attention to the verbiage that you use. Um, Make it soul-based. Start your intentions with I am versus I want. Yes. And then remi- reminder on like the low frequency that is rooted in the guilt and shame. What is gonna? What habits or things can you incorporate in your life that's going to fuel the joy and bliss feeling that's deep-rooted within you? Um, for me, I kind of tried to reflect on a few things. Music, dancing, exercise, getting journaling, outside, journaling, your morning routine. <laughs> connecting with others. Um, I mean, this could be another topic, I'll say that. <laughs> but I feel like I just listened to a podcast. Um, there's like the introvert and extrovert, and then there's like a middle ground one. where Ambivert or yes, something? Yes, ambivert, yes. And because I feel like one of my, or two of my strengths are connecting with others and communication. But I am not necessarily fueled up by being in, like, very public situations all the time. I feel like my social battery gets filled very quickly. And I don't know if it's just because when I'm social, I'm social. And, like... Let me do a quick explanation (laughs) on this. I have all three levels of certification from Myers-Briggs. That's a different story for a different day. But I I went crazy once I discovered this Topic number 53 with Joanna and May. (laughs) So a lot of people know about step one of Myers-Briggs, which tells you, I'm ENFP, you're probably ESFJ. Uh-huh. Um, well, I guess we can write that down yeah. too. Yes. Go back to the recording. But in any case, um, step two of Myers Briggs mm-hmm. goes over the twenty facets that each of us have. So each of the four preference pairs or the four dichotomies: yeah. extrovert, introvert, sensing, intuition, thinking, feeling, judging, perceiving. Which some of those words don't even properly explain what it means. But yeah. in any case, there's five facets underneath each one. Yeah. So when you do a step two, you might have two or three of your extroverted introverted facets that are out of zone oh. so you might be an extrovert who introverts two of your facets and so Got even it. though overall you get energy from being around other people yeah there may be two ways where you show up as more of an introvert gotcha. and so i think it's more helpful for people to see the step two to yeah. see if they're um in zone in the middle or out of zone for Got each it. of these facets to understand because mm-hmm. like some of the facets for that are like initiating versus receiving. Got it. Are you someone who's always introducing people or do you wait to be introduced? Oh, I introduce. Or like, another, Hi, my name's Megan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or another one could be like expressive versus quiet. Got it. So those are examples of some where like maybe for those two you still are. Yeah. But um, and there's also uh, this whole idea of each of the 16 types has an order of the mental functions, which is the SNTF. And so, for example, something about me that you wouldn't guess, because you feel like I've just told you a lot of stuff, (laughs) and that I'm not a private person, but feeling is my second function, and I introvert my feeling. So if I have deep pain, I'm not going to tell you about it, unless you're in my super, super inner circle. Gotcha. And so, there's a lot to discover going through these different assessments, but that might help to answer for you. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Why you feel like... um, Ambivert isn't something we studied in our certifications. I'm not, but that's probably for people who like my extrovert is all in zone. Gotcha. I have nothing that's even in the middle or out of zone. Yeah. So, oh, and for the feeling, it's 100%. I answer no questions as a thinker. Gotcha. Those are very obvious to me, but for some people that have their facets uh, a mixture, yeah. then you might be confused to be like, and by the way, we use all eight. 
A hundred percent of the time in my training, I say, you're going to forget that I'm going to say this, but we use all eight. But people feel so stressed trying to see which one they prefer. Yeah. That's like, but I do both. I'm like, I know. I told you at the beginning. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> uses all eight and that you would forget. Right. So it happens a hundred percent of the time. Yep. We use all of them. The reason you want to know which four you prefer and the facets is because the order of the mental functions tells you your greatest gift and the place where you're not that good and gotcha. when you're under stress that moves into first place oh, but you're okay. bad at it and so then you look i don't know the pc word for this but you don't look right gotcha yeah but something you is off. off yeah you show up like different it's called being in the grip of the your grip. inferior function Ooh, okay. in the grip. So anyways, we in can talk grips. about that at a later one but grips. that might explain <laughs> why yeah and there was something else i wanted to say oh the reflection piece about planning is kind of what she's referring to because yeah you want to reflect back to be like, what puts me in that high frequency? Right, so yeah. that should be part of your reflex and Absolutely. exercise before you plan moving forward. Right, totally. And then manifestation. Um, oh, I never finished my house story. Long story short, <laughs> it took two years to do the dirty work that we needed to. We got pre-approved for more than what we wanted at that point. And then when it came to getting house, we actually got um, rejected from several. Thank God that we did. And we just got super clear. Luckily, we're in the space where we were living with Josh's parents, and we didn't have to rush into anything, and we could Good. be really picky. But um, we, this house ended up being everything with the porch as a bonus um, that we wanted. So it was so definitely like universe had your back, all in divine timing. And we ended up having like some kind of – we almost like missed the viewing because they like rescheduled it. But I ended up not like having a personal connection with the previous owner – and it was just like such a weird circumstance. When things are meant to be, it's amazing to look back to see all the divine intervention. Right. That if it's meant to be, it will be. Yeah, it happens. You cannot miss what's meant for no, you. No, no, it's so cool. By the way, did you know my dad? Well, he was born in Cranston, but like he worked in Warwick his whole life. Uh huh. So it's funny that you live in oh, Warwick. Oh yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Because where are you? Was, where did your family grow up with? In well, like, we grew up in Rehoboth, Mass. But okay. Um. My dad had originally, this sounds fancier than it was. We had a house on the ocean in Batunic, about 15 houses down from the ocean, Miss. But yeah. my dad got the lot for like $10,000 and built the house. It was maybe like a $30,000 investment, yeah. um, which is now would be worth. Well, I mean, all the houses are about to fall in the ocean, which is why we eventually yeah. sold. But yeah. we spent 12 summers in Matunic and then yeah. moved over to East Matunic. Oh, okay. And we, we had the house in Rehoboth, which we sold when Matt and I went to gotcha. college. So. That is a small world, though. Mm -hmm. So crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, I feel like we touched upon a lot. But so hopefully you things. all feel guided and inspired heading into 2024. Hopefully you took some notes and you can dive into any of the topics that you resonated with. And, yeah, thank you so much for coming tonight and all of your expertise. It was so much fun. Woo! Stay tuned for episodes 30 and above of all the different topics we'll chat about next. Thanks, guys. It was guys. nice to be with you all. Bye. Toodles.